Hello, my friends. Hello, and welcome once again to Stately Von Manor. And today, we're talking about short fiction today. Something I haven't talked enough about. I've talked a little bit about short fiction. I talk about some short stories now and again. But I should probably talk more about it because I like short fiction a lot. I love anthologies. Uh, so I thought, you know what? I'll talk about some short fiction. So I put together a list of my 10 favorite short stories. A top 10 list of my 10 favorite short stories. I realized as I was putting it together that when it comes to short fiction, I have a taste for the creepy. Uh, I don't know why that is. So many great short stories out there that are in the mystery genre or science fiction or contemporary fiction or whatever, and I go straight for the creepy when it comes to short fiction. Just me, I guess. Uh, but my 10 favorite are a little on the darker side. Uh, so let's get into it. My 10 favorite short stories. We're going to go 10 to 1 as we do on this list, on these kinds of lists. Uh, of course, these are short stories, not books, but I will flash up a photograph using my magic powers uh, showing the book cover where you of the book that you could find these stories in. A lot of these stories, you could find these stories in multiple volumes. You could find them all over the place. Uh, but number 10 is Duel by Richard Matheson. Now, there are a lot of great Richard Matheson stories out there. And this list is not the best stories. These are my favorites. This is not the best Richard Matheson story, not, not by a long shot, but it is my favorite. And I think it's because it's such a great short exercise in suspense that is really affecting. And the main character who ha who goes through this traumatic experience where he ends up having to fight for his life is changed by this experience. He's not the same person at the end of the story that he is in the beginning of the story. There's a lot packed into this little story. Uh, it's just a little masterpiece by Richard Matheson, I think, of suspense. And famously, uh, this was turned into Steven Spielberg's first film, uh, Duel. Excellent story, uh, my number 10. Uh, my number nine is Jefty is Five by Harlan Ellison. Jefty is Five is a really disturbing story about a kid, Jefty, who's five and he stays five. He never grows up. The years pass by, Jefty stays five. And not only that, but the world that Jefty lived in, his private world, the things that Jeff Jefty loved, like the radio shows he would listen to when he was a little kid, because that's when he was a little kid, was when there was radio shows, they continued to exist. Now, we all know radio shows disappeared, but they stayed in Jefty's world, and comic books would show up that Jefty loved that weren't from any... Uh, any comic book store or any place else. These were the old timey kind of comic books. Where did they come from? It's just a really creepy little story. And it's kind of on the nose what this story is about. Again, this is not Harlan Ellison's best story. But this one, I read it and I, I never let it go. It always stuck with me, this story. And I find myself thinking about this story quite often. Uh, and so I think for that reason alone, it should be on this list. So that's Jeff D is Five by Harlan Ellison, which brings us to no no number eight, uh, The Naval Treaty by Arthur Conan Doyle, a Sherlock Holmes story, The Naval Treaty. And this is, well, I guess it's my favorite Sherlock Holmes story. Again, it's my favorite Sherlock Holmes, Holmes short story. Probably my favorite story is The Hound of the Baskervilles, which is a novel. But for a short story, this is probably it, even though, again, not his best. But it's my favorite because it's just so clever. And it's one of those stories you're like, ah, how, how did I not know that? You know? And it has a lot of nice little Sherlock Holmes moments in it. So if you're a Sherlock Holmes fan, which I am, this is a pretty darn good story. You're going to like this one. Which brings us to number seven, Sticks by Carl Edward Wagner. Sticks, 
this book is creepy or this story is creepy. Um, this actually was a very famous horror story for a while. It's one of those stories from the 1970s that had a pretty big impact at the time. It's a very pulpy story. Uh, and basically a lot of it comes straight out of Carl Edward Wagner's interest in the pulp magazines and in pulp horror. And also it has the sticks uh, that have became famous later uh, from Blair Witch. You see those kinds of things in sticks. And uh, it's just a creepy little story. I think it's one of the best horror stories from the 70s, for sure. Um, I don't know if it's the best horror story from the 70s, but man, it is really, really good. And so you'll find it in a lot of anthologies, sticks. I, it's been anthologized to death, probably more than anything else Carl Edward, Carl Edward Wagner ever did. But man, is it good. So Sticks by Carl Edward Wagner, which brings us to number six, Black Man with a Horn by T.E.D. Klein. This is a Lovecraftian story. Probably the best Lovecraftian story that I've ever read that wasn't written by Lovecraft. Such a creepy, disturbing, unsettling story uh, by T.E.D. Klein. This guy wrote some great... Uh, this Basically, it's a novella, a longish horror story. And he wrote some great ones, and they're all from uh, one collection, Dark Gods. Uh, well, he wrote another one that wasn't in that collection. But th this story, man, out of everything he wrote, I think this was his best. And it's another one of those stories where you read it, and it's just so creepy. Kind of stays with you. And it was really well written, too. Um, kind of a, another horror masterpiece. Like I said, my short fiction tastes run to the creepy, apparently. Uh, so that was uh, Black Man with a Horn, which brings us to number five, The Willows. Another creepy one by Algernon Blackwood. This is a very famous story, The Willows. H.P. Uh, Lovecraft called this the greatest weird story ever written. And he could be right. Even now, after all of these years, The Willows it could still be it because it's such a perfect example of the weird story, uh, the weird tale. Uh, creepy, unsettling. Um, you have two characters on vacation uh, on a canoe trip who run into something dangerous but unexplainable and just weird. Uh, and it's menacing. It's like a really strange, really menacing story uh, that's also has a kind of a sense of wonder to it. It's really a good story, masterfully put together by Algernon Blackwood. This is probably his best story. Uh, he wrote a lot of good ones, but this is probably his best, uh, The Willows by Algernon Blackwood, which brings us to number four, Mars is Heaven. By Ray Bradbury. Mars is Heaven is one of my favorite Ray Bradbury stories. Uh, you can find it in, um, I think it's in Martian Chronicles, so they just changed the name. But uh, it's one of Ray Bradbury's best stories. Again, a creepy story taking place on the planet Mars. Uh, and I don't want to say anything about it at all, just in case you, you haven't read it. Um, if you've read the Martian Chronicles, you've read it. Um, there are a couple places you could find it, but it is an excellent, excellent story. So, has some just gloriously frightening moments in it. Um, the ending of this story is brilliant. Love it. Mars is heaven. Which brings us to number three, The Whisperer in Darkness by H.P. Lovecraft. Again, not Lovecraft's best story. I can think of a few that are a lot better. And this story actually has a couple weak points. I will not deny that. But the overall effect of this story, it's like a very strange alien invasion story with some really cool sci-fi props in it. Um, 
But overall, it's really unsettling and creepy. There's something really creepy about the atmosphere of this story. And the way the story is told, uh, there's some obvious um, unreliable narrator stuff in here, but there's also some not so obvious unreliable narrator stuff in here. I would argue that the main narrator of the story who tells you the story is not the most reliable when he's coming to his own uh, motivations and the reasons he did what he did throughout the story. Uh, which I think you might pick up on if you read the story a few times. And once you know it, I have. I've read the story a few times. So that's my number three, which brings me to my number two, The Great God Pan uh, by Arthur Mackin. A giant of a horror story. Of course, it's more horrors. A giant of a horror story. One of Arthur Mackin's best stories, just in general. This is some of the best fiction he ever came up with. It does rely a bit too much on coincidence. Or was it just fate? Who knows? But an excellent story. Um, and it's, it's another one that you, you can't talk too much about the plot without giving stuff away. But it does start off with this kind of evil mad scientist who cares nothing except about anything except his own experiment. And he subjects a young woman to this experiment, not caring really what happens to her. And something terrible happens to her. And the result of what happens to her uh, continues. Uh, and it's, it's just a really great story. I really like this one a lot. Which me, brings me to my number one story, which should shock absolutely nobody that this is my number one story. This is The Shadow Kingdom by Robert E. Howard. Famously, this has been cited as being the first sword and sorcery story. It might be, depending on how you qualify that. Uh, it is the first King Cull story, the first story featuring King Cull. And it involves King Cull in his ancient uh, kingdom of Volusia, who has to fight lizard people or snake people, actually, serpent men, who can take the form of anybody they wish through their evil magic. And it's, just, it, it's better, actually, than that little plot bit I gave. It's actually a very well done, it's, it's very well written, this story. Uh, it has an excellent sense of pace. It's creepy when it needs to be creepy. It has a lot of action in it, of course, because it's Robert E. Howard. Uh, the, the character work is really, really good in all the characters. Just really good work as far as the character work is concerned. And it's one of those short stories that you'd find in the pulps that are so plot heavy and so plot driven that even though they're very short, compared to novels, they pack what a lot of novels sometimes carry around as far as uh, content. Uh, they pack a lot into a, a little bit. And one of the reasons this one is so effective, aside from just the wonderful writing style and the story itself, is the character work, which is really well done in a short space. You get, in a little bit of space, you get to know everything you need to know about the main characters in this story. Uh, I can go on and on, and I will, because I'm going to be talking about this story in a few weeks on the Robert E. Howard Show on Mondays. But for right now, it's a little preview, because that is pretty much my favorite short story. Now, this can change. Maybe in a year or two, I'll do another one of these. Um, we'll see. But for now, those are my favorite short stories, my top 10 favorite short stories. Hope you enjoyed it. Hope you might have gotten some ideas of some things to read. Who knows? Anyway, guys, I hope you have a great day, and I will catch you next time.